Welcome to lecture 21 of our series on prosody, on one of my favorite topics, prosody serving pragmatic functions. So far we focused on the paralinguistic realm and the phonological realm, the former involving speaker state and speaker identity and so forth, the latter marking the meaning of word identity and linguistic structure. This lecture is on the pragmatic functions, things that are important in interaction. A theme of this lecture is how different this realm of prosody is from the other realms, and indeed different from almost everything else in language. We'll work our way through these six points with many illustrations, starting with the possibility of positive assessments. So back in lecture two, I said that we're really glad you're watching these videos. And I said it sincerely, with the proper prosody to show that I was sincere. What is that prosody? Now, just a note, this is not about emotion. Yes, there are positive emotions and negative emotions, but when I say these words with positive feeling, I'm not experiencing joy. Rather, it's a social statement. I'm taking a stance and professing a sentiment. Early research kind of was confused on this, I think. We can say they examined positive assessment in the same way as research in emotion proceeded by looking for simple correlations between single prosodic features and positive feelings. Uh, so, for example, well, before I go there, let me just point out, you might expect tons of research on this. You know, being positive is important. In most conversations, people find an opportunity to express positive feeling at least a few times, but in the research realm, there's hundreds more papers on the prosody of anger than the prosody of positive feeling. So, I don't know, go figure. But there have been a few studies, and what stands out is that there's no consistent picture. In fact, some of the findings are contradictory. Some find lengthening, longer vowels. Sometimes others find increase in speaking rate. Sometimes have there been finding of louder speech, others find quieter speech. Uh, there's technical in issues with exactly what's being measured and variation across genres, but the deeper problem is that everybody's me measuring different aspects of prosody in isolation. It's like the parable, uh, parable of the blind man and the elephant. Each is doing his best, uh, but when you only look at volume in isolation, or only look at speaking rate in isolation, or pitch slope in isolation, you get a strange picture. What happens if you put all the information together? Well, then the picture looks kind of like this. Uh, positive assessment. First a region of high pitch, then a region of lengthening and significant loudness. It sounds kind of like this. Good job. The components have to come in this order. They're not generically correlating. Experimentally, there is a specific temporal configuration. So there's a first big point to make. Uh, we can call this the positive assessment construction. It's very widely used. Here's a couple of examples, uh, one from a real conversation. Yeah, I like her style. I like her style. And one as a team cheer. Go Cougars! A few existing ex ex additional examples. In the first one, the prosody is reinforcing the lexical meaning. I had my last job with tutoring. I loved teaching. I love helping kids. Like, that part has never left me. Like, I <laughs> And you can hear the positive assessment prosody appearing twice. The little oval show where it occurs. At other times, the prosody is sort of pulling its own weight, as in the last example. It doesn't look specifically positive just from the words, but if you listen to it, there you go. All right. They're playing a video game. One of them is instructing the other. The, the, the second player has done the right thing, and the praise is, there you go. All right, so these examples were to show that this configuration, the positive assessment construction, can express many times of positive assessment and express it in many contexts. Uh, just to drive the point home, this is a configuration and a multi-stream configuration. It's not just about pitch, not just about loudness, it's all these things happening together. Let's consider another example, the late peak construction. Now in lecture 17, I talked about this as a mid-level feature, uh, but we can equally well analyze it as a construction. In either case, what's important is the departure from the general pattern, seen on the left, where pitch peaks align with energy peaks on stressed syllables. It's sort of a natural thing to do. If I'm talking about an elephant, I will talk about an elephant, where the motion and the pitch peak and the energy peak all align. But you can also make the pitch peak come a little bit later, as seen at right. So here are two diagrams uh, illustrating the difference on the word marmalade. In the first, you see the two pitch peaks, the pitch peak and the energy peak, very close. And the second, you see the pitch peak 
delayed, it's late, it's, uh, it's over a syllable, it comes all the way over into the next syllable. Uh, the first one sounds like this. Let's try that again. The first one sounds like this. The marmalade. And the second one sounds like this. Mariana made the marmalade. Marmalade. All right. Maybe you're getting a feeling of implication. Maybe we should try the marmalade. All right. Late peak has a lot of functions. Uh, here's another example of a German, uh, where question marking in German can include a late peak coming early in the utterance. Uh, it, the, the rise at the end, um, in some contexts, is less important than that early peak. Uh, in the first case, the statement, you see the pitch peak, the blue arrow, aligning pretty well with the energy peak within the stress syllable of Katarina. In the second case, the pitch peak comes late. The blue arrow comes after the green arrow. Um, it's actually outside of the stress syllable, shown in gray. So the first one sounds like this. Katarina sucht eine Wohnung. And the second one like this. Katarina sucht eine Wohnung. All right. And just, again, comparing the names. Katarina so. Katarina so. All right. Yeah. So even if you didn't hear the rest of it, you could probably figure out that the second one is going to turn into a question. Coming back to English. This difference is often implicated in politeness. So here's an exercise, if you like. Give it a try. So you can try saying this phrase, maybe we can talk more over coffee, in two ways. First with aligned peaks on the stressed syllables. Something like, maybe we can talk more over coffee. Pretty cold. Not very sincere. It's like it's never going to happen. Or you can say it with the delayed peaks. Well, maybe we can talk more over coffee. Where's a sincere invitation? Pause if you like and give it a try. Okay, well, I hope you could do that. It's a little bit amazing, I think, that a 20 milli an 80 millisecond difference, it can be as small as 80 milliseconds, uh, can be the difference between politeness versus coldness. Um, maybe you couldn't do this. Not everybody can. So even in experimental conditions, there's a fraction of the population that just is unable to produce the, the late peaks on demand. Um, you know, people really differ. One final example of a multi-stream configuration is the minor third construction. It's when I cue the class to greet me back by saying, class, good morning. In terms of intonation, there's a pitch down step between morning. That's the salient thing. That's why this is called the minor third. But it's truly a multi-stream configuration. As Dee O'Connell showed experimentally, it includes um, harmonicity, uh, flattening, the pitch has to be quite narrow in both of those syllables, lengthening, high in the speaker's range, loud relative to the other context. So there's a lot of things going on. So to recap, as we said back in Lecture 7, prosody is more than just intonation. Pitch alone is just the pitch of the iceberg. Multi-stream prosodic configurations, we'll call them constructions, are involved in all, all sorts of pr pragmatic functions. Just to list some common categories, they include managing tour taking, marking instantaneous cognitive state, indicating stance or attitude, marking topic structure, including digressions, and managing interpersonal relations. All right, so in this lecture, we've introduced the notion of multiple, multi-stream temporal configurations. There's a lot more to say about them, so we'll pick up points two through six in the next lecture. So that wraps it up for our introduction to for, for the pragmatic functions of prosody and language. And we'll talk more about specifically prosodic constructions and how they convey pragmatic meanings.